You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, here in the empty studio once again, but joined by Ken over Skype. How's it going, Ken? Hey, Neil. How are you doing today? How are you uh, holding up here? You said you might shave your beard, which is a huge move, but uh, are you seriously considering that? This is this is a big might, but uh, it would just be out of uh, boredom, but also to refresh the beard. Every now and again, you just need a, a completely brand new one, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. It's like when you're on the internet and you've been searching for things, you just want to hit refresh and uh, hopefully the image will load <laughs> a little bit over. faster. Yeah. Uh, and Matt is joining us uh, over Skype. How are you doing today, Matt? Looking for a new place, I hear? Yeah, still uh, checking out some places. Uh, hopefully, a place with a full, fully working fridge and a oven. So that's the plan. Well, to good, move out. Good luck with that. We uh, we heard that you were making some coffee on the stove, as you said, like a hobo. So hopefully, that coffee <laughs> turned out okay. Yeah, it was over my uh, barrel fire that I had in my apartment. There you go. Well, Matt uh, was reenacting the scene from Castaway when Tom Hanks says, "I have made fire." So we didn't we didn't get a chance to see it, but we are sure that it was great. Um, Jeff was not able to join us today. Uh, he's on the search for the world's greatest gumbo recipe. So uh, good luck to him. He cannot leave his house, but uh, I think he's just going to try and search in other ways. So uh, hopefully Did you say gumbo or gumball? Gumbo. Gumbo. Okay. Yeah. So They're Very different things. They are very different, but uh, Jeff did text say that he wants to make a gumball flavored gumbo. So um, I don't know. That's a mistake. It's a big <laughs> mistake. I think you're right. Uh, but we do have some special guests here um, instead of Jeff. Uh, and uh, our first special guest is going to be a competitor today. He came to visit us with his wife uh, at Brixie's and played uh, Liquid Courage's uh, trivia format. And uh, he's a cruiserweight champion on Patreon, which we appreciate his support. And he's from Terrell, Texas. And that's Evan Bendixson. How's it going, Evan? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I, uh, I went to and graduated from UT Dallas. I got a double major in computer science and computer engineering. So I've been a software developer for about the past year in the Dallas area. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, uh, can we officially name you as one of our uh, Mr. Robot hackers if need be? Yes, of course. I would gladly do that if needed. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's good. I'm glad that we have it on recording now. It's official. It's signed. <laughs> uh, well, thank no you. going back. Right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, today's uh, special guest host uh, wrote a special game for us. And uh, she comes to us from Baltimore, Maryland. She supports us on uh, Patreon at the Triviality Superstar level, which we appreciate. And that is Jamie Austin. How's it going, Jamie? Hey, guys. How's everyone? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on the show. Of course. And you said this is the first trivia game you've ever written, right? Yes. This is the first game I've ever written. First game I've ever hosted. Uh, well, we're really excited about it, and we know that you posted in the crop, uh, our Facebook group, which if you're listening, you should join if you're not in there yet, but you posted there for some help, and uh, some people gave you some assistance, right? Yeah, I got a lot of help. Um, Aaron Barclay from Orange Cat Trivia helped me out a lot, even up to this morning, which was really cool, so I owe her a big thanks. All right, well, uh, she's definitely a friend of the show, and thank you, Aaron, for helping Jamie out. Uh, trivia community is always super supportive. Uh, well, let's just get to the game. We're really excited to uh, play Jamie's game. And uh, before we do that, though, we have to hear from the rules, guys. Let's see how he's doing. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. The cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Ken, what do you think? Sounds like the quarantine's really getting to him. 
Yeah, he's a little horse, um, and not an actual little horse, but I think his voice is a little horse. <laughs> I think, uh, unlike Tom Hanks with the uh, the volleyball, he only has a tennis ball, so he's really losing his mind. I think you're right. Um, well, on that note, I think Ken and I are going to team up today. Um, I'm in the studio. He's over Skype. So um, we have a tendency to uh, kind of go with our guts uh, when we play trivia. So we're, we're going to be uh, global guts today, like the TV show. Is that okay with you, Ken? Guts. Awesome. Do you have it? Do do you have it? <laughs> Matt, uh, you're going to partner with Evan? Yeah. I mean, we can go off the... Uh the Nickelodeon game show thing and be the legends of the hidden temples. Ooh. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. But, but Matt, now that you've shaved your head, your temples are no longer hidden. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I'll let Olmec decide if that's okay. Love the team name. So legends of the hidden temple versus global guts. Uh, Jamie, feel free to take it away. All right. So starting off, Round one, I wanted to let you guys knock this one right out of the park. What city and state is the Baseball Hall of Fame located in? Okay, I think I can um, lock us in, Ken. Okay, sounds good. All right, do you know this one, Evan? I do not, not at all. <laughs> okay, I believe, well, I know it's in Cooperstown, and I believe that's in New York. Um, sometimes I get this wrong somehow, because I the basketball one's in Springfield, Massachusetts, I think. Football's in something, Ohio, Canton. I think this one's Cooperstown, New York, so we can lock in with that one. All right, that's perfect. Yep, um, I kind of remember this one uh, between the Hall of Fames by by saying, where's the Baseball Hall of Fame? Cooperstown, New York City. So that's what, uh, yeah, we went with Cooperstown, New York. And you guys both got it. The right. Baseball Hall of Fame is in Cooperstown, New York. Awesome. That question that's was awesome. a home run. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So for my next question, it has a little bit of background information. I'm actually a teacher, and I teach children who are blind and visually impaired. So I wanted to connect children's literature with what I do for my career. Cloudy with a chance of eyeballs. What condition is the leading cause of blindness in the world? I can, um, I can lock in a guess if you want. Yeah, sure. I'll mm-hmm. trust you on that one. I My first thought was glaucoma. What do you think, Evan? That is... That was the only like condition that I could think of right off the top of my head. So, so I think I think we can lock in with glaucoma. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm just gonna take a guess and say macular degeneration. So neither of you got it right. Um, you guys were actually really close with saying glaucoma. The answer is cataracts. Oh uh, man, a cloud that forms over your eye. Well, thank you for the work that you do too. That sounds like a really rewarding job. It's really fun. Uh, my students are bright in so many different ways. I get to do a lot of different things, all the way from Braille to technology. So it keeps things interesting. That's great. All right. On to question three. Sweater weather. Wind speeds between 39 and 73 miles per hour are known as a tropical storm. What is the term for the weather system with winds starting at 74 miles per hour? Okay. I think I can lock this in. Yeah, I have no idea on this one, Ken. So I'll I'll trust you on that one. I don't know. Is that like the speed that like a it's actually like a hurricane, or is that different? <clears throat> so yeah, a tropical storm can be upgraded to a hurricane. I think I think that's the steps it takes. Um, <clears throat> so I can't think of anything else. <laughs> um, so we can probably lock in with hurricane then. Yeah, sounds good. Matt's choking on his uh, stovetop coffee a little bit there. <laughs> Hope you're all right. It's the grains of the instant coffee. You didn't not, get the grains out. Not the um, Yeah, coincidentally, it's a pretty windy day here uh, in Chicago, um, but we had the same uh, thought process that you would upgrade a tropical storm to a hurricane. And you guys all got it. The answer is a hurricane. Um, Erin actually helped me rewrite this question. I had it worded a little bit differently, and she gave me a really fun fact Winds that start at zero and go up to 38 miles per hour are known as a tropical depression. Mm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Wow. Um, And as Jeff has told us before, winds between zero and five miles per hour are just him breaking wind. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Gives everyone tropical depression. That's that's true. (laughs) Some things just go hand in hand. (laughs) Yeah, perfect. And moving on to question four. Delicious food and drink. May Queen, 
Whistly crab, fox whelps, and Lane's Prince Albert are all species of what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, I think I have an answer. Uh, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and lock in. I'm usually pretty bad at these ones. <laughs> I'm guessing an animal. Um, does any of this sound familiar to you? No, I was hoping with each one that I would like recognize or latch onto one of them, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. A Prince Albert sounds familiar. Um, I think it, it's, for me, it sounds, I'm thinking like sea life. So I think it, maybe it's like a types of jellyfish or starfish or coral i don't know does any of that sound good to you yeah let's 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 go jellyfish i like jellyfish okay locked in with jellyfish so um this one the only reason i kind of know it was i went uh, somewhere near saugatuck michigan with colleen and her family and uh, we went to uh, a farm and on that farm, um, I don't know if they had any of these, but I remember researching some of what these are after we went to the farm just to kind of uh, familiarize myself with it. And I believe they are apples because we were on an apple farm. And you would be correct, Neil. That is apples. <laughs> hey, way to go. Yep. Uh, one time I learned something. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you said they when you said they were on a farm, I got less likely that it was going to be jellyfish. But you know, I, I held out hope. Just... Wait, you haven't you haven't been to a jellyfish farm? Or... No, I must not have made it that far. Okay. Actually, I, I learned this fact when uh, I went to the uh, the piercer for uh, Jeff to get his Prince Albert piercing, <laughs> and the piercer actually told us, you know, Prince Albert is actually a type of apple as well. <laughs> oh, that's right, because Jeff had to bite down on an apple for the pain. Mm-hmm. Right for the Prince Albert, right? Yeah. Don't look it up, guys. Don't look it up. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Not safe for work. Um, speaking of jellyfish farms, this next question actually goes out to anyone who majored in something that doesn't necessarily align with what career path they ended up on. So my next question is, what did the creator of SpongeBob, Steven Hillenburg, study in college? I think I can lock in here. Okay. Yeah. I trust you. My my best guess would be it's like some kind of like engineering or something where you would just totally not expect him to end up creating a show, but I'm not sure. Yeah, he he was on. I think he was on Rocco before he did that, and that's where he comes from. Um, I know he has like an extensive um, education background. I think he went to like a, one of those. Either not an Ivy League school, but something like it. Um, but I can I could definitely see engineering um, there. So I, th- I think we can lock in with engineering. All right, sounds good. As for me, I think the only type of person that would make a TV show about a sea sponge would be a marine biologist. It is a marine biologist. <laughs> <laughs> um, he went to Humboldt State University, which I thought was really interesting because I had never heard of that school. And studied marine biology. Mm-hmm. All right, then. After five questions, Legends of the Hidden Temple have 20 points, and uh, the Global Guts have 40. So just mm. twice as good because Matt uh, already choked in this game, and it's not even over yet. <laughs> uh, harsh, but fair. All right. Um, so the next question is Mummified pres- Presidents. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? It's likely a trick, right? Well, it wasn't the category mummified presidents, though. Yeah. Um, so you think it's Brendan Fraser? I, I was literally just going to say Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Emotep, or right? I think that was the name. Uh, or Akmun Ra. Um, all right, Ken. Um, Hugh let's Grant. Just, let's just lock in with uh, a Grant because. Okay, that sounds good. So. Uh, <laughs> doesn't make sense to be anyone else but ulysses s grant which makes me think it's probably not um right that's what i was thinking but if it is and we guess something else then i'll feel really dumb (laughs) so i think i think to protect ourselves we can lock in with ulysses s grant all right that sounds good okay yep you said grant unfortunately no one got this one um it was a trick question no one is actually buried in oh. Grant's tomb. People think that Ulysses S. Grant is there, his widow Julia, and their dog are buried there, but it's actually an above-ground historical landmark. Um, my mm. dad 
really likes history and he was telling me about this the other day when I went home to visit my parents. So I thought oh. that was it seems That's okay. Like, it seems like a very dad thing to do. Like, uh, hey, do you want to hear a trivia question? Here's the question, and then it's like, oh, sorry, you're wrong. No one's buried there. Yeah, you know, it's a very good That's dad joke. Kind of exactly how it happened. <laughs> so if if we had been like, uh, I can't think of anyone, we tap out. We'd technically be right. We would have right? points. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Moving on to the next question. Tap your heels together three times. In the 1939 MGM classic, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy sports some fabulous footwear. Intended to blow the audience away with their newfounded Technicolor, unfortunately, the original color didn't stand out as well as they would have liked. Then led to her ruby slippers becoming the true star of the show. What was the original color of our favorite cans and sparkling shoes? So Neil, I'm pretty sure I know this one. Um, I think you probably know it too with your movie trivia knowledge. So happy to leave it to you if you think you know it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know this one. So we can lock in over here uh, at Global Guts. Yeah, not a big surprise that you guys locked in right away on the Wizard of Oz movie question. Um, Evan, do you have any ideas? Uh, my best guess would be since the the name of the of the actual like city is the Emerald City that they were green or emerald, but that's just a guess. Well, I think so. That the idea was this was one of the first movies that they were releasing in Technicolor, um, and they wanted something that was really going to stand out. Um, but I, I think originally the shoes were silver, which was too close to the black and white that the movies were previously filmed in, and they didn't really pop as the way they wanted them to. So I think that's why they changed it to ruby red. I'm pretty sure it was silver. Okay, let's go silver. Sounds good. Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt uh, locked in there uh, correctly. Um, I believe they were silver. You guys all got it. The shoes were silver. All right. Yep. Emerald would be cool, too. They would look really nice, I bet. It's a good color. They would probably stand out just as well as the ruby red slippers. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but nothing stands out quite like the uh, SpongeBob uh, basketball shoes you have. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which are gathering dust because we're not allowed to play. It's so sad. This is where we're on the condo, right? Yeah, do some fake post ups. You know, work on my on my footwork. <laughs> well, I ordered a Nerf hoop, but it's for some reason non essential, so they're not sending it to me right now. Yikes! But I disagree. It's very essential. Uh, moving on to the next question. Help! My name is too boring. What is Paul McCartney's first name? Oh yeah, this is um. Uh, I believe I know this one. Ken does not uh, does not like the Beatles, um, and uh, we always kind of talk about um, Paul McCartney and and everything like that. But I think I do know what his first name is. Uh, I think I can lock in Ken if that's cool. Yeah, I think I have an idea too. So you're good. Okay, I got nothing. Uh, I mean, my best guess would be that it was like one of the names of the other members of the Beatles, and they didn't want to like repeat it. Mm -hmm. uh because it would have been like john and john or probably not ringo ringo's pretty Two obvious ringos. <laughs> <laughs> what are ringo, the ringo ringo and ringo <laughs> uh, okay. i'll pass yeah. on that band to be honest um yeah i what's my, my name matt can you name me please matt come on <laughs> my first my first thought was john but i think that doesn't sound right as i know i've heard this one before but I don't think we're going to get anywhere else. So we can, I guess we can lock in with John. Yeah. So uh, it's a little known fact that uh, Destiny's Child's song, Say My Name, was actually written by Paul McCartney um, and given to them. Uh, that is not true. But um, the way that I remember <laughs> his uh, first name is if you think of uh, sort of British royalty or famous Brit uh, Britons, I suppose, you think of James Bond. And that's how I remember that Paul McCartney's first name, I believe, is Sir James. So that's what we went with. And you're right, it is James. Mm, that's a shame for us. Yeah. <laughs> you were close. John is also a boring name. Yeah, that's true. Not exciting like Matt or Ken. <laughs> no offense to all the Johns out there. Yeah. Yes, no offense whatsoever. And moving on to the next question, just like my sense of humor, not having rained for more than two million years, what continent is home to the driest place on Earth? Bonus points if you can tell me the specific place. I think I, think I know the, the regular answer. I don't think I have the bonus answer, so let's lock it. Okay. So no rain for quite some time. 
if I recall, in the question. Uh, what are you thinking? Is it Antarctica? That would so that would make sense because you would re- initially my thoughts went to like Australia or Africa. Over those two million years, you know, the climate has changed greatly. I imagine in all of those regions, um, but Antarctica is still going to be at the poles. So you're thinking it's not going to get a lot of precipitation. Um, so I think Antarctica is a good answer. We can lock in with that. Yeah, sounds good to me. And as they say in the movie The Crow 2, which takes place in Antarctica, it can't not rain all the time, uh, Matt. Uh, we did say Antarctica. You guys both got it. It is Antarctica. Does anybody want to try for guessing where in Antarctica, or would you just like to know? <laughs> the South Pole, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say because Missy Elliott can't stand the rain, it's Missy Elliott uh, Peak Point. Point. <laughs> We're going to have to write a letter to rename it that. It's McMurdo Dry Valleys. Oh, yeah. Oh. De- definitely wouldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> Matt, you didn't like my crow joke? That's uh, whatever. I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't seen The Crow. Too. Oh, my God. That's, that's, that's your movie, man. Is it? The Crow. I, I made a thing up about The Crow, too, but The Crow 1 should be uh-huh. uh, right up your alley. Yeah. That's it's basically you, Matt. Um, you put on the makeup, you you throw on the, the emo music, you stroll through the alleys at night and, and... Comes back from the dead. Come back from the dead, yep. Solve crime. Okay. Sounds like I should sue for the rights. So the last question of this round, comrades who are out of this world, this Russian femi fatale is often mistaken for Sally Ride, the first American woman to go into space. Who was the actual first woman to ever enter space? Uh, first woman in space. My first thought was Wonder Woman, which I don't think counts either. <laughs> um, or Miss Marvel, I guess, at that point. Um, but I, I have no idea. So um, Beatrice Aldrin. I don't know. I got nothing. I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. You said uh, Femme Fatale, so I'm just going off of La Femme Nikita. So we're just going to say Nikita. And the answer is Valentina Tereshkova. So close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a like a 90s tennis player, to be honest. All right, Neil, let's get the scores for the first round. All right. Well, it looks like um, Global Guts is at 70. Uh, what about you over at uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple? Mm, we're, we're a little behind, but we're, we're up to 40. I'm feeling good about the swing round, so we'll see what happens. All right. So 40 to 70. So it's uh, fairly close here. Uh, Jamie, what do you have in store for us for the swing round today? For the swing round, I have song lyrics for you guys. All right. Oh, good. So I'm going to read a couple lyrics from a song, and I need you to tell me the song title and the artist. Oof. So you get five points for the title, five points for the artist. All right. All right. Could be huge. All right. Question one. 13-month-old baby broke the looking glass. Seven years of bad luck, the good things in your past. Question two. Oh, can't you see you belong to me? How my poor heart aches with every step you take. Question three. Super fresh, now watch me jock. Jockin' on them haters, man. <laughs> Question four. I'm a man without conviction. I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go, you come and go. Question five. We've known each other for so long. Your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. Question six. Too high, can't come down. Losing my head, spinning round and round. Do you feel me now? Question seven. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend, but I'd always thought that I'd see you again. Question eight. Come now, come dry your eyes. You know you a star. You can touch the sky. I know that it's hard, but you have to try. If you need advice, let me simplify. Question nine. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see, No, I won't be afraid. Oh, I won't be afraid. Question 10. Sun is shining in the sky. 
there ain't a cloud in sight. It stopped raining. Everybody's in the play. And don't you know, it's a beautiful new day. Okay, we'll think about these for a little while, and we'll be back with our answers. All right. All the answers are locked in, so let's hear these questions one more time, Jamie, and we'll give our answers. So number one is 13-month-old baby broke the looking glass. Seven years of bad luck, the good things in your past. Yep. So over here at uh, Global Guts, um, we didn't really know this one. We just heard Looking Glass. So we said it was Alice in Wonderland by Tom Petty. Unfortunately, the writing was on the wall with this one. I believe it's Superstitious by Stevie Wonder. So Stevie Wonder is correct, but it's Superstition. Oh, boo. <laughs> That's so okay. close. <laughs> so close. I'll take, I'll take the five points. We'll yeah. take it. We'll take mm-hmm. it. Number two, oh, can't you see you belong to me? How my poor heart aches with every step you take, every move you make, and every vow you break, every smile you fake, every claim you stake, I'll be watching you. Yep, so this one uh, we're pretty sure was by the police, and I think the original title was Every Breath You Take Should Be a Circular Breath to Last Hours and Hours, but I think it was shortened to just Every Breath You Take uh, by the police. Yeah, we went ahead and said uh, that it was also the police and that it was Every Breath You Take. We did not know the full title, but that's good to know. Every Breath You Take by the Police is correct. All right. Number three is Super Fresh, Now Watch Me Jock, Jockin' on Them Haters, Man. Can't uh, get the image of uh, nerdy suburban kids back in high school doing this dance all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I believe it's uh, Crank That by Soldier Boy. Yeah, it makes me think of Devin Hester because he used to come out to it before every punt return. Uh, crank That Soldier Boy. Crank That Soldier Boy by Soldier Boy. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite songs of all time. <laughs> I know that's very strange, but in the college town I went to, we only had two bars and I made made friends with one of the DJs. Anytime I was there, he would play it without me even have, even having to ask. It was kind of the best thing in the world. I mean, the, the Calypso drum intro is kind of one of the best intros to a song of the entire era. So very good stuff. <laughs> Number four, I'm a man without conviction. I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go, you come and go. Yeah, we, we just thought, um, who is a man without conviction and also uh, without human appendages? So we went Kermit the Frog and Rainbow Connection. <laughs> we, sorry. We, uh, we went a slightly different uh, direction, a slightly different animal. Uh, we said this was Karma Chameleon by Culture Club. It is, in fact, Karma Chameleon by oh, Culture yeah. Club. Now yeah. it makes, yeah, now you can hear it. <laughs> Poor Kermit. <laughs> Ugh. Number five, we've known each other for so long. Your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. Yep. Um, you might hear this song if you click on the wrong YouTube link. Uh, we went Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Yeah, Neil knows the rules, and so do I. Uh, it's Never Give You Up, Rick Astley. And the answer is Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Number six, too high, can't come down. Losing my head, spinning round and round. Do you feel me now? Um, yeah, this one, um, most people might remember it as um, uh, sort of a, a flight attendant theme song. Um, <laughs> but from my childhood, I remember it uh, having to do with uh, snake charming. So uh, we went Britney Spears' Toxic. Yeah, we also said Britney Spears' Toxic. It is Toxic by Britney Spears. Number seven. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend, but I always thought that I'd see you again. Just yesterday morning, uh, Neil, let me know this answer. Um, well, I thought you to- <laughs> I thought you told me you knew this answer um, when you're in uh, acoustic guitar uh, open mics. Um, sometimes Ken will put on some glasses, a hat, open up a book, a cup of coffee, and he'll sing uh, Fire and Rain by James Taylor. Oh, uh, we went a 
definitely different direction and, and see you again by Wiz Khalifa. It is, in fact, Fire and Rain by James Taylor. That was all Ken on that one. I had no idea whatsoever. Next question. Come now, come dry your eyes. You know you a star, you can touch the sky. I know that it's hard, but you have to try. If you need advice, let me simplify. Yep. Um, did not know this one whatsoever. So we just said uh, Conjunction Junction by um, whatever the name of that show was. I'm losing. Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, Matt thought this, that these lyrics sounded a little uh, Nicki Minaj-esque. So we went Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is close, but it's actually Good as Hell by Lizzo. Mm. A little more recent. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, man. We're going to hear it from, uh, from Team I'm... Bar Wars at Trivia. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and the next one is When the Night Has Come and the Land is Dark and the Moon is the Only Light We'll See. No, I Won't Be Afraid. Oh, I Won't Be Afraid. Yeah, uh, this one we quickly knew was uh, Stand By Me, um, and uh, we couldn't think of the artists, uh, so Ken just kind of made a good guess, which I thought uh, was also good, was Sam Cooke, so that's what we went with. Mm -hmm. Um, We also quickly came to Stand By By Me. Um, I think it's an old Motown era kind of hit, so uh, we went with uh, Otis Redding. You both got the song right. It is Stand By Me. And the artist is Ben E. King. Mm. Ooh, okay. Mm. And the last one for the swing round, sun is shining in the sky. There ain't a cloud in sight. It stopped raining. Everybody's in the play. And don't you know, it's a beautiful new day. This one clicked as soon as Ken said the artist. Um, We went ELO and Mr. Blue Sky. Yep, we also went ELO and Mr. Blue Sky. And everybody got it. Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. Mm. After the swing round, it looks like uh, the score is going to be 110 for the uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple and 135 for Global Guts. So let's uh, move right along to round two. Uh, Round two. Question one. You mean to tell me James Bond was originally Australian? Famous for being the youngest actor to ever portray James Bond, he starred in the film On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Who is it? (laughs) Neil's who is been, it? Who is it, Neil? <laughs> Neil's been studying his whole life for this question. Yeah, we had at, uh, at, at trivia nights. Neil used to write down all the Bond movies in order. <laughs> just praying that one day it would come up. Yeah, it was a good good way to keep the the brain juices flowing and uh, and keep my memory. Because anytime if I got any of them wrong or missed them, then I would know that uh, I was on a downhill trajectory. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're locked in over here. Pierce Brosnan. Your Connerys, your Roger Moores, your uh... one of each specifically. Yeah. <laughs> then uh... I've I've actually never seen a single James Bond movie, so I'm not much help here. Okay. Well, the last one that people never get, I believe, is George Lazenby. Lazenby. I can't remember. It's that, but that's what it is. Yep. Um, he co-starred with um, the future Elena Tyrell from Game of Thrones, Diana Rigg, in, uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, and that's George Lazenby. It is George Lazenby. Nice job, guys. Yeah, Bond always comes up in trivia. Question two. The perfect son of Freddie Mercury and Dana Elaine Owens. This person is definitely famous for his own work, but also many chart toppers performed by other people. What talented artist wrote lyrics to the song Manic Monday? Hmm. Um, so, Ken, I have an idea of... There's a trivia fact that I always hold on to about who wrote Manic Monday, but I don't know if he wrote the lyrics. I know he wrote the song, though, I think, or it was one of his songs, and then they they used it, and it's someone you hate, if you get, get what I'm smoking here. All right, well, <laughs> get what you're smoking. Uh, yeah, go ahead, just lock in. Okay. What you think. Okay, so if you're looking at the era, you got, this is early 1980s, right? Yeah. yeah. My first thought was Prince, because I know that he's he's kind of like credited as writing a bunch of songs that he didn't perform because they weren't like Prince songs. Does that make sense to you? or do you th- Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm good with that. Okay, so we can lock in with Prince. All right, Neil, who do I hate? Because I don't know what you're going to say. Uh, I think, um, well, as Matt knows, uh, that song was actually written by Andy Dalton and the Bangles. Um, but, uh, Ken, I know you're, you're not a huge, maybe you don't hate him, but you're not a huge fan of Prince. So that's what we locked in with. And the answer is Prince. All right. 
All yeah, right. Ken, Ken hates, hates Prince is a harsh exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you said he was overrated. Maybe it's what it was. It wasn't as harsh as hate. That's for sure. You know what? Let's not speak ill of Prince right now. <laughs> Why? What happened to him? <laughs> Too soon. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Taking a vacation to Swamp Mushy Muddy apparently turns you green. Question three. What is Oscar the Grouch's original color from the first season of Sesame Street? This has been... All right. I'm locked in. Ooh, nice. I remember this question. For me, it's... it's, it's I think it's orange, but I'm not sure. How does that sound to you? Yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, I wasn't sure. I was probably just going to guess like blue or, or something, and then people would confuse him with Cookie Monster, but I don't know. Yeah, I I know I've heard this before, and I remember hearing it and being like, that doesn't make any sense. So it wouldn't be like a brown or something you would think of associated with trash. I think I think it was, we're going to go with a big old orange trash monster, so orange. Yeah, I was kind of between brown and orange myself, and I settled on uh, orange, and I hope, uh, hope I didn't overthink it. And the answer is orange. <laughs> All right. Gross. Nice job on that one. <laughs> it, it's good when you learn something because I've gotten that wrong so many times before. <laughs> they had just... too many too many orange Muppets on that show already, so they yeah. needed a green one. <laughs> and he vacationed to Swampy Mushy Muddy. Mm-hmm. So if you know someone that wants to turn green, tell them that's where they should go. <laughs> Sounds good to know. And moving on to the next question... Unusual beverage pairs for Yahoo's keyboard warriors and Doritos lovers alike. Question four. What popular soda beverage was originally developed as a mixer for whiskey? Hey, we all know this, right, guys? I don't, do but I, I am glad you do. Really? We've had this, so we're locked in. Oh. Uh, so, based on the, the clue, I'm leaning towards Mountain Dew. Yeah, you gotta do the Dew. I'm pretty sure it's that... At first, I was like Baja Blast, but I'm like, no, that's more of a tequila drink. So we can we can say Mountain Dew. <laughs> yep, we had this one uh, once before, I think, and it was crazy enough that I remembered it. And it's Mountain Dew. Everyone's locked in. Yep. Right. Oh, you guys got it. It is Mountain Dew. That is not a good combo, though. So <laughs> we said, yeah. <laughs> it's still not a good combo. I don't care how quarantined I am, and if it's all I have left. <laughs> I guarantee you, by the end of this, you will have drink, uh, had a whiskey and Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's possible. I'd be really curious to see like the color that that would create when you mix those two things. Yeah, it's got to be some weird brown. Ugh. No Ugh. thanks. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next question. I wonder how Gritty would have felt about this. The Philadelphia Flyers of the 1970s were known as the Broad Street what? We can lock in. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> I think it's uh, bullies. Broad Street bullies. Uh, yeah, yeah, I defer to you. I, I don't know much about hockey, so that's good with me. It sounds right. I'm pretty sure that's it. I, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, if you're locked in, they're, they were a bunch of bunch of tough guys, got a lot of penalty minutes. I think Gritty would have fit in, to be honest. Uh, Broad Street bullies. And it's right all around. They were the Broad Street bullies. I'm actually from Philadelphia, so the fact that you guys love Gritty makes my heart very happy. <laughs> I just love mascots, and, and Gritty's probably probably top three for me, I would say. He, he's, he's rising quickly. Who is in, who when I the... realized that Gritty was like self-aware, that's when I, I fell in love with Gritty. Yeah, Philly, Philly Fanatic is number one for me, then uh, Benny the Bull, and then Gritty. Um, there's a really great Katie Nolan video where she switches bodies with Gritty, and it's pretty pretty funny. I would recommend looking it up. After five questions in the second round here, um, Team Legends of the Hidden Temple, 160. Team Global Guts, 185. And uh, since we're five questions in, uh, normally we have a listener submit a question at uh, question five. But for today, we're just going to tell you to go over to the crop on Facebook, join us there, or hit us up on Instagram and Twitter at TrivialityPod and uh, interact with us over there. We'd appreciate it. And I would argue that all these questions are listener-submitted because you listen to the game. So thank you. I do listen to the game, and I also have a love of mascots. I actually worked as a mascot handler in college. Oh. Um, so I did a workshop <laughs> with the guy who created the Philly Fanatic and also Gritty. So that's kind of cool. 
<laughs> wow. That is cool. Did you have a handler when you were the mascot, Neil? We did. Yeah, we had several uh, several handlers. If you weren't uh, dressed up in uh, the uniform, there was someone else with you at all times. Yep, except um, my handler during a charity event uh, did not tell me there was a dip in the asphalt, and that's why I had whiplash. So uh, he did not do his job. He had one. He had one job, and he did not do it. So. Moving on to the next question. Let's see what we remember from high school. Within five years, how long did the hundred year war actually last? <laughs> I think I, I think I have this on the on the money. Well, yeah, go it, go for it. it was, okay. Neil, it was a little shorter or a little longer. I can't remember. I think it was like uh I could be a wrong. Little longer? Yeah, I think it was like one you're locked in, right, Matt? Yeah. One thirteen. I think it was one thirteen, or it's like really close to that. All right, let's say one thirteen. Okay. Yeah, I think you guys were really close. I'm almost 100% sure it's 112 years, but I could be wrong, too. So you're both getting points. Um, the actual answer is 116 years. Mm. Okay. So I would have accepted anywhere between 111 and 121. All right. Nice. We so, remembered, guys. Good job. As a teacher, I'm very proud of you guys for remembering <laughs> something from high school. Uh, that's not from high school. I, I, <laughs> I wrote this, I think, two <laughs> years ago. But if it was any more than two years ago, I wouldn't remember. That's for sure. Question seven. Celebrating Christmas a bit early this year. Well known for its red and green foliage, which country does the poinsettia plant originate from? Fun fact, the colors in this plant also appear on the country's flag. I think I remember this one, Ken. I might be way off, though. I remember being. I remember I answered this question very incorrectly, and then when the answer came out or something around that, I was shocked, and I don't think I forgot it. All right, we're we're gonna see how good my memory is, which normally it is not good. So we're gonna lock in. All right. What do you um, think, Evan? I'm pretty sure it's Mexico. Okay. I, I mean, that would make sense. The green and the red are uh, very prominent in the flag, and. Uh, uh, I like it. We're going to go Mexico. Yeah, I I remember, I think I guessed maybe South America or Canada. I don't remember. And I remember seeing Mexico and being shocked and tried not to forget it. So we also locked in with Mexico. You guess the continent of South America. Yeah. <laughs> or Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's right. The answer is Mexico. Our next question. Many creatures are trapped here. As John Hammond surely knows, what name is given to fossilized tree resin? We will go ahead and lock in. So the the clue, I believe, is a Jurassic Park reference. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, so so that would lead me to guess Amber? Yeah, that's what I wrote down. That that's what those the mosquitoes or whatever were trapped in, right? It was Amber. Right, and the, yes, and then they did the, the DNA dance and they got the dinosaurs. <laughs> Dino DNA. <laughs> That's how it works. So, <laughs> so we're going to lock in with Amber. Uh, yes, Jamie spared no expense on this question. We also agreed that it was Amber. I was just really excited. <laughs> <laughs> because you're all right. It's Amber. Hooray. This, this round is going very well for our teams. Although we're not gaining any ground. <laughs> <laughs> we're not losing ground, though, so we'll take fair. it. Yeah, for sure. And the next question, call me maybe. Although at the box office, everyone was watching sequels like Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, or Shrek the Third, the original iPhone was also released this year. What year was that? I'm trying to remember. It's so funny, like something, uh, such a big event like this, you think you would never forget, but it's, um, it's one of those that it's just kind of, there's so many iPhones yeah. now that I... Well, people weren't lining up on day one for for the first one, really. I don't think so, anyway. Um, Ken and I are we're gonna lock in over here. So my first iPhone, I got an iPhone 3S, and I think that was like 2008 or 2009, which would lead me to think that this is somewhere around 2006, 2007. Okay. I, I I was thinking 2006, so we can go with that if you yeah, want. And I think Call Me Maybe came out in 2006, but that should, that, that sounds seemed, right. No way. It's way later seemed, then, right? That seems way, earlier. Way later. Yeah. Yeah, that seems well, too early. Anyway, I don't know, so we're gonna say <laughs> 2006. Yeah, I remember it was my freshman year of college, um, so we said 2007. Could be 06 too, though. 
And the answer is 2007. Mm. All right. Hey, a little separation there. Nice. Yeah. I was between the two, but it's, you know, you never know. And I have one more question for you guys in this round. It's going to take a lot to drag me away from all of these coastlines. What U.S. state is closest to Africa? This is one of those, the way the maps are drawn is tricky and tricks you questions, I believe. Yes. All right, we'll, um, we'll lock in. Uh, I've heard this question before, uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, that I could be wrong, that it's, and I'm, I'm bad at the states, but it's whatever state is in like the northeasternmost part of the U.S. Okay, so it's, it's you would think it's Florida, right, but it's not. Right. Right. So the most northeastern would be Maine, but that doesn't jut out far enough. So you think it might be like Rhode Island or um, one of those, or do you think it's Maine? I think it's Maine. Okay. Well, then Maine it is. Locked in. We're going the other way and saying Hawaii. And the answer is Maine. All right. Maine actually has the most area of coastlines there are over 3400 california has a little bit under 3400 so i thought that was uh, kind of cool that is cool after regulation the scores are very very close legends of the hidden temple has 200 and uh, global guts has 225 uh, before we hear those final categories uh, from Jamie. Uh, just want to let everyone know that Jamie and Evan are both Patreon supporters and we very, very much appreciate it. So if you'd like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash triviality podcast. And uh, currently in the situation we're in with uh, having everyone over Skype and um, being shelter in place, uh, some of the uh, larger tiered uh, items uh, will be sent out just a little bit later than normal, but we do very much appreciate it if you want to help support the show and uh, keeping it running uh, during this time. Uh, and we thank you for that. And we thank Evan and Jamie uh, as well. Yeah, but those bonus episodes are ready right away the moment you sign up. That yeah, is correct. True. That is correct. So we're for for as little as a dollar a month, you can uh, <laughs> feed a podcast. There you go. And uh, we're we're not we're stopping recording. We're gonna keep pushing out content, and uh, we're super happy about it. So more content. Content, even more content. We had a Disney con- like what was that tournament? Tournament. Amazing. We're gonna have an office Wait. tournament. Yep, we're doing it all. Get excited! All right, what are those uh, categories, Jamie? Category one is, is video games. Category two is science. Category three is large groups of people. <laughs> Category four is movies. And category five is local celebrities. Okay, all the wagers are now locked in, so let's get the questions. In video games, question one is, Animal Crossing New Horizons was released on March 20th, 2020. Upon starting the game, your island is home to a native fruit tree. Out of the five possibilities, please name two. Question two in science. The study of plants is known as what field of science? Question three, in large groups of people. Having over three million members, what is the largest union in the United States? Hint, despite their collective bargaining power, they're still criminally underpaid. Question four, in movies. Keeping original runtime in mind, what is the longest Star Wars movie? And question five in local celebrities, where in Chicago was Walt Disney born? Okay, we're going to take a look at these questions, come up with our answers, and we will be right back. All the answers are now locked in. So, Jamie, let's hear those questions and we will give our answers. Question one in video games. Animal Crossing New Horizons was released on March 20th, 2020. Upon starting the game, your island is home to a native fruit tree. Out of the five possibilities, please name two. So, uh, sadly, me and Neil have not played this game uh, yet. Um, So we just had to guess, and we said apples and oranges. Mm. Uh, We wagered 20 all the way down. Um, Sadly, I haven't played this either, because every store has been 
sold out of a Switch for the last several months now, as the time of recording, I'm sure. Uh, but Evan, you were playing it, so why don't you take it away? Yeah, my wife and I have been playing quite a bit the past couple of days, so uh, shout out to my wife, Erin. Um, so I believe uh, all five are peaches, pears, cherries, and then apples and oranges. And we wager 30, by the way. So the five possibilities are cherries, apples, peaches, pears, and oranges. So good job, guys. <laughs> All right. Good guess, Neil. Yep, it worked out. It, it is a really good game. So if you can get your hands on a copy, I definitely recommend it. Uh, question two in science. The study of plants is known as what field of science? I think we only did uh, 10 points on this one, but we said botany. We wagered 20 and agreed that it's botany. It is, in fact, botany. Not to be confused with the study of Matt in botany. Robotany. <laughs> and question three, in large groups of people, having over three million members, what is the largest union in the United States? We wagered uh, 20, and uh, we agree with you, uh, criminally underpaid, and I think a lot of people are realizing that now, being at home with their own children, and we went with teachers. Uh, we wagered 20 points, obviously, because we would wager 20 all the way down. I don't know why I keep saying it, but we agree that it's the teachers. It is the teachers union. Question four in movies. Keeping original runtime in mind, what is the longest Star Wars movie? We uh, wagered 30 on this one, and uh, Neil said The Last Jedi. Yeah, um, we had some discussion around it, um, mostly, you know, uh, prequels versus sequels um, and kind of settled in on The Last Jedi. And everybody got it. Star Wars The Last Jedi comes in hot at 2 hours and 32 minutes. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> and my last question in local celebrities where in Chicago was Walt Disney born? Yep, we wagered uh, 20 points in this one. We weren't too sure. We knew that um, from uh, a Disney bonus uh, tournament that we did that Matt mentioned, I believe is he grew up maybe in, Mar I think it's Marcelin, Missouri or something, and that's what Main Street's based off of. But we weren't too sure on where he was born in Chicago, but we do know several famous Chicagoans were born uh, in a suburb not too far from here called Oak Park. So that's what we went with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, were, we had no idea on this one either. Um, I just based it on everyone being from this suburb, saying they're from Chicago, even though they're not. And we said Naperville. So nobody got that one. It's actually Hermosa. Mm. Hmm. I did not know that. After the entire game, it looks like Legends of the Hidden Temple could not defeat Olmec. Uh, and they uh, ended with 260. And uh, we seem to, um, whatever that term is for hitting the peak uh, of Global Guts, and we had 295 over here. We, we ascended the, the aggro crag. There you go. Ascended. Thank you, Ken. Ascended the mm -hmm. aggro crag. So we are today's cream of the crop. I am the queen. Yeah, I think we got stuck in the shrine of the silver monkey. <laughs> That's how that works. You didn't have one of those medallions? <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't get out in time. That Ran out of medallions. The 30-year-old man grabbed me and dragged me out of the room, which looks really weird now in retrospect. Yeah. But that's okay. But, <laughs> but me and Neil will hoist that piece of the crag. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that thank never you. seems to get any smaller. <laughs> thank you to Mo for helping us out there. Um, I think that's her name, right? That was the ref? Yeah. Yeah, Mo? Summer Sanders. Oh, oh yeah, Play. right. Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much, uh, first of all, to Evan. Uh, you were able to visit us at uh, our pub trivia uh, with your wife, Erin. It was great to see you guys there, but it was also great to have you uh, on the show today. So uh, any final words, any final shout outs? Yeah, uh, well, just thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I've been listening to y'all for, I guess, since like last like July or August. Uh, so quite some time now. Uh, so, yeah, just shout out to my wife, Erin, and my uh my trivia team back home, the 1800s benches. Uh, but yeah, so thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your support on Patreon. Um, thank you to uh, Jamie Austin for hosting this game. It was a lot of fun. And we know it was your first game. And it's probably a little bit nerve wracking, but you did a wonderful job. And um, we really appreciated having you here. Any, any shout outs or hellos you'd like to give? Thanks, guys. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend, Sean Regan. He was actually the first person to ever get me interested in trivia he used to hold a pub trivia in the college town that i went to and my roommate emily dalton because she got me into your podcast 
I have a long commute to work about an hour and a half in the morning and about the same on my way home. (laughs) Um, And I get to listen to the podcast there and back and it makes the commute a lot easier. It's like an eight mile drive here in LA. I understand. (laughs) And you know what? Thank you also to Neil for holding down the Ford over at the, uh, the studio slash his apartment office and uh, taking over even more hosting duties than usual lately. Yeah, no, thank you uh, for saying that, Ken. Uh, it's been fun. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not as lonely, obviously, with all of you uh, over here uh, on Skype. And um, Jamie, tell your friend Emily that uh, her last name will go down in infamy if she's a fan of Patrick Swayze and she'll figure out why. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, we've been doing our best to continue to push out content to uh, sort of reinvent how we record, at least for the time being. And it's been going well. We've appreciated all of you signing up. Uh, if you'd like, as I said, like to join us on Patreon, you can do patreon.com slash triviality podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at triviality pod. Join us over at the crop. And for Jeff, who's trying to find that gumball gumbo recipe, Ken, Matt, Jamie, and Evan. My name is Neil. And that was triviality. Well, Oscar, Oscar the Grouch uh, loved trash, and so did all my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> oh, no. I think, Brutal. Ken, I think you should put uh, Swampy Mushy Muddy on your Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> you get some different kind of matches for sure.